Hello, it is I, Dr. Brian Lorgon 111, and I am back here in Minecraft today with fractals. Once again, I haven't done these in a while, but I'm not here to talk about fractals today. Beautiful mathematical functions that you can make pretty pictures out of. Instead, I want to talk about command blocks and what the recent snapshots have done to update command blocks. But as I'm doing that, I want to go back and just kind of reset some things and draw a new picture up here. And so let me just get another little mechanism turned on. All right, and that'll start drawing a new picture as I talk about some things, because we have new command blocks in the snapshots and they kind of change everything. And I think in order to explain how the command blocks change things, it's important to kind of look back and see how things have changed in the past. And so if we go way back in the past, when command blocks were first invented, you would kind of hook them up with redstone, mostly like you would in survival. And you'd have torches to knot things and repeaters to do things on a delay. And I could run a little bit of things over here and it would say hi and then turn a light on or turn a light off and different types of things. And this was all very cool at the time, but uh, there's a number of problems with doing this for kind of like high performance computing systems. Uh, for one, there's a bunch of things that introduce delays, like repeaters and comparators that take a tenth of a second to kind of run. For another, there's things like redstone torches, which are nice for negating logic, but also cause uh, lighting updates to the game, which could slow things down. And a lot of these things also cause block updates. Additionally, another thing that was very futzy about command blocks, I've got a command block here that says A and one that says B, is the order that things run. If I power both of these things, it prints BA over here. But if I power both these blocks over here, it prints AB. And that's because the order in which block updates happen when you activate redstone around a number of command blocks depended upon which way you're facing, north, east, south, or west. And so you had to be very careful to, you know, make sure your redstone uh, command block contraptions were always pointing to the south or to the east or something crazy like that in order to get things to run in the expected order. And as people kind of figured out how to do different things with command blocks, a lot of people started doing things uh, along the lines of this with fill clocks. Uh, I've kind of artificially modified this one so that you can actually see the redstone flashing. But if you wanted to run a series of commands over and over again in a loop, here I'm just saying hello, one, two, three, you could do it with a fill strip. And these aren't actually visually updating, uh, but you can see that it's actually changing from redstone to wool to redstone to wool to turn on and off and on and off very quickly. And that's why I can't seem to break the blocks because this loop is running very quickly to go ahead and replace it. And so that was a big, once people figured out how to do this, that was a big important thing to do because it meant it was an easy way for you to put a bunch of commands in a loop that will all run over and over after one another. However, in order to do so, you had to change all these blocks from wool to redstone and back again like 20 times a second. And so you're causing lots of block updates. And block updates are actually one of the things that slows down Minecraft the most. Because when you update blocks, there's a bunch of things that happen to have to happen in the world. Uh, it might be the case that the blocks are going to change lighting. Uh, if you're on a you know client server or even in local uh, on your machine, it's the case that there are network packets that have to go between the client and the server to explain the updates. And if you update a bunch of blocks in a single chunk, it'll actually resend the entire chunk. And so you had to be careful about how many block updates you did. Otherwise, you'd cause tons and tons of network traffic. And also, it meant that all I'm trying to do is run these four commands. And I had to set up this whole other wonky thing with a fill strip and something that turns it off and make it the right length and have these things on the correct northeast, west, south side of these things in order to run. So it was just very complicated. So that was all back through 1.8. Here in the 1.9 snapshots, now we have something new. And that is the new command blocks. And they basically fix all of the deficiencies that I was just describing there. And so 
Yes, right here you can see the command blocks, they have arrows on them, and so they just point in a line. And so rather than having to know about northeast, west, south kind of things, now it's the case that you can just set up some command block to activate something, and then it will execute the commands down the line with these green chain command blocks. So already that makes things a whole lot simpler for people to set up, and you don't have to watch, if you're watching someone's tutorial about how to build something, you don't have to make sure you're facing the same north or west direction in order to build it. Now you can build it in any of the directions, provided you have the arrows pointing in the correct direction, which is very easy to see. Uh, another thing that happened is in order to do kind of like conditional logic, things like testing for something, rather than needing a comparator or inverting something, rather than needing a redstone torch, now there's actually conditional blocks. I think I've got uh, one of them over here that's uh, pretty easy to see right over here. Right. So there's conditional blocks. So this block actually tests for something. And this block over here, you'll notice that its arrow is a different shape than the arrow that's over here, is a conditional block. This block says conditional, whereas this block says unconditional. And that means that this block will only run if this block, its previous blocks, test succeeded. And so conditional blocks are great because it means we don't have to futz around with comparators anymore, which introduce delays as well as uh, block updates. Now we can just write normal code and when we want to do something different if a previous test went, we can just change it to a conditional block. And it's very visually indicative. Uh, like you can just look from the outside and see which blocks are conditional blocks. And as a result, it's very easy to look at your contraption that you've built from the outside and figure out where an important test is and then the blocks that are only going to conditionally run if that test succeeded. And so that was another big change that made things both easier to program and a bit faster. So you didn't have to deal with fiddly comparators or other really esoteric stuff like command stats in order to make things run fast and do tests. And finally, looping mechanisms. Uh, it used to be the case that you'd do fill strips that needed all of these block updates, and you'd have to have a bunch of blocks that were powered. I actually don't even have an example of one out here right now, but in addition to impulse blocks, the orange blocks, and chain blocks, the green blocks, there's also these perfect purple repeating blocks, which allow you to do loops kind of without any work. <laughs> and so, for example, if I have a block over here that says say one and I make it always active chain block and I make this always active as a repeat loop then it's just going to say one 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 all over again and I could put a bunch of these in a line and have this one say two it'll say one two one two all over again and so purple blocks basically made it one block that you can do in order to run things in a loop over and over again. There's no redstone associated with these things because we can say that they're always active rather than needing redstone, which is very convenient. And there's no block updates. And so basically now we can run all kinds of things super fast without any block updates. I don't actually have any repeating purple blocks here. Uh, instead, I'm using another technique where you can activate blocks remotely uh, auto 1B is the thing that toggles this, this part of the command block GUI from needs redstone to uh, always active. And so in this case, uh, 275614 is basically telling this impulse command block that's right over here. If I hit F3 at the bottom left, you'll see that's 275614 to turn itself on to go ahead and run right now. And what it does is it actually turns itself back off. But the whole point of activating that to do that is to schedule all of these other green blocks that then just go in a line and they can snake around and do all kinds of cool things. And so without any block updates, without any redstone, I can remotely activate this block that tells that block to go and run its little chain series. And... Yeah, again, I'm just trying to give an overview, like this isn't a command block tutorial, but these are the things that changed in kind or in nature, and it was really a revolutionary change in the snapshots that allow us to do things like I'm doing right now, which is reasonably high performance computing in Minecraft. While I've been talking, I've been computing a different picture of the Mandelbrot set. I made a similar thing that does the same graph, about a year and a half ago out of command blocks. And it took me about 10 hours to program. And after I programmed it, it took about 10 hours to run to produce this picture. Uh, now with the new command blocks, this only took me about two hours to program. 
And as you can see, this thing just in about 10 minutes, uh, or probably even less, has already drawn most of the picture. And so the thing runs about 40 times faster and was much, much easier to program using the new command blocks that have been introduced in 1.9. And yeah, so basically the point of this video is to say that command blocks are now revolutionary uh, in terms of the changes that are coming in 1.9. Let me show off something else too. Um, I currently have a night vision effect. If I do this... Uh, my night vision's going to go away, I believe, in one second. No, it didn't. Uh, if I make it night vision 2, we'll go away now in one second. There we go. Great. So it's gotten dark under here. Uh, I'm in peaceful mode right now. But if I go uh, difficulty 1 to go into easy mode, mobs start spawning. So here's some skeletons. And they're walking around, and I can fight them uh, and do all kinds of things. Minecraft here. Let me go ahead and give myself uh, some night vision again. so that we can see all the mobs down here. I'm doing high performance computing. I'm doing a whole lot of crazy computation to plot the Mandelbrot set. And it's running right now and you can see this armor stand running by and coloring in the blocks. And despite the fact that all that computation's going on, Minecraft still plays normally. These are dark squares over here. I can break and place blocks. The mobs walk around just like normal. My CPU is not pegged. Uh, I'm hardly using any resources, and I'm still able to do all of these computations. And so I think that that is super awesome. Uh, and it shows just how much things have really changed. Because previously, like I said, it would have taken 10 hours to do this. And I would have been, you know, <laughs> struggling to use computer resources somewhat. Uh, that's not actually true, but... In any case, I can do things really, really fast in terms of computing, and it doesn't really interact with Minecraft gameplay because the command blocks have just about no impact uh, in terms of block updates and other things. All right, so I'm kind of rambling. In any case, I want to give a shout out to Sarge uh, on the Minecraft dev team, who I think did most of the things with the command blocks. Uh, there were actually a series of updates that came out this past week that first introduced the three types of blocks, the repeating blocks that were purple, the chain blocks that were the green ones, uh, and then the existing impulse orange blocks. And when they first got introduced, they were somewhat underwhelming. They fixed the XYZ problem by letting you kind of lay things out in a line uh, and made it easier to do loops. But they still always needed redstone um, and were still a bit futzy to work with. Then in one of the later updates, they added the conditional thing where you could make it easy to do if-then kind of tests which really started to revolutionize things because it meant you could do very efficient tests without having to write a lot of complicated command block code. And then after the weekend, uh, Sarge got some more feedback from the community and made the conditional blocks more visible so that it was easy to see where they were in your programs and make it easier when you have a big line of greens to figure out where you need to go find a command. And added this always active kind of thing, which meant that you no longer had to use any redstone blocks anywhere. And by default, these things would just work in the expected ways and allowed the little auto one or auto zero to turn things on and off remotely trick without doing block updates. And with that change, everything just came terrific. And so that was Sarge putting together some good ideas and then taking some really good feedback from the community in order to land in the spot where we are now. And yeah, I did not really try very hard to optimize this. I bet I could make this run even faster if I were to try, which I may do, but in any case, you can kind of now use Minecraft as a high-performance computing platform and still play the game while it's doing it, which is pretty awesome. And so, yeah, thanks to Minecraft and Mojang for making these things possible. In the future, I may do some command block tutorials that try to walk through the nuts and bolts of what the new command blocks do, how to use them, and a few effective kind of idioms or programming strategies for using the command blocks. But uh, I may or may not do that, depending upon how much time I have over the next weeks. But in any case, I just wanted to show this off. I think it's really awesome. I hope, as always, that you guys are having a great day, and I will see you again soon with more Minecraft. Bye-bye.